And action! <laughs> Hello everybody, thank you for coming out here this beautiful evening. Um, Sandy just like pointed out that we have a good connection to God because he turns the rain down. Uh, so if anybody needs a number, let us know. Um, we're still debating if it's him or her or they, them. We don't know them. Um, anyway. So uh, welcome everybody, um, we uh, have our new uh, exhibition here. Last year we built uh, something called One Pound of Almonds and you can see uh, the almonds here, that's one pound of almonds. They take 1,230 gallons of water to grow and so you could walk in here and we had 1,230 gallons filled with water from the salt and sea. Um, and then stand in the water that's needed to grow this few almonds, right? And so then... It looked like this. Yes. Anybody who didn't got the card last year can take it over there and go to the website, onepoundofalmonds.com. Right. And we uh, collected all this water and we filled it by hand from the salt and sea because uh, when they normally... Uh, grow almonds in a drought they need to pump groundwater and that is only possible because energy is so cheap right it's nearly free we have all this energy slaves free energy slaves the term from Buckminster Fuller that uh, are constantly working for us about thousand for each of you unless you are rich then it's many more um, and every... that's why we decided to do it by hand not by pump and it needed us four days to fill and like today we had great help last year it was kirsten and pierre and some other people on the last day and today it was corinne and again kirsten who helped and steve i'm not sure if he's here steve did the welding for us the day before yes yesterday right and so last year we had like all those 1230 gallons and then magic happened right they were here out in the sun and suddenly uh they started to turn different colors because we made the choice to have like all of these I used gallons we didn't buy one because you cannot do an environmental project and then do a lot of like buy a lot of plastic shit and so um, yeah so we were really lucky we saved for about 10 months we saved gallons our neighbors friends and then we got from a small recycling company in Brawley we got the missing ones because to get empty gallons with lids not crushed uh, and we thought we needed 100, uh, 1,300 at least to have some when they crash to get our 1,230 gallons we needed for that project. And then they were standing here and turning all these colors. So now we bring it back and we had them in our garage. We kept 50 in our garage. And now the question is like, what's in the salt and sea? That's all salt and sea water. All the different colors, all this combination of residues of sugary American drinks. Uh, I wonder if it's good to put it in your body or if you drink, start drinking salt and sea water instead. Um, and then uh, the salt and sea uh, and uh, whatever was in there in life forms, but also we had very different uh, wind conditions and, and weather conditions. So whatever com came in there was different each and every day. And so that's why when we saw all those different colors, that's why it's coming back. So please reflect on what's on the salt, what's in the salt and sea. And if you want to come back tomorrow, we're doing an environmental conference here in town uh, under the same uh, question, what's in the salt and sea. And we have amazing people. I see a few of them here in the crowd. Let me just introduce who will be here tomorrow for our environmental festival. It will be first of all, Sonia Herbert, who is uh, basically uh, one of the people who have lived here longest. Uh, it will be Candace and Kelsey also from town. They have been growing up here for a long time. Of course, Chris Landis here in the middle. He has been uh, documenting the salt and sea longer than probably anybody else. Iron um, Dad will tell about his his gorgeous and dangerous run a couple of days. Yeah, ago. so <laughs> he's he's tracking the shore, receding, receding shoreline, running 45 hours or 42 hours. It was 42 hours this year. 
Yeah, yeah so we'll we'll get into all the grizzly details tomorrow. <laughs> right, we get the grizzly details tomorrow. Jasmine Phillips is here, uh, who's a um, citizen, scientist. citizen scientist who has been looking into. She will probably be able to tell you what actually is in that stuff. Then there's Tom Sefton, who has been working on desalination. Uh, around the Salton Sea since 15 years or so? It's been uh, 18 years. 18 years yeah. now? Yeah. yeah, and did I forget anybody? Yeah. Zar! 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 Oh shit, you're there big there! Thank you! Yeah. And Zar will talk about a language that we often use uh, when we describe this region and the Salton Sea and what is right, what's not right. Anybody else? We have so many. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. The, 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 the nice ladies from Committee DC Valley. They're, they're and not from, here. They're yes. not here, but we have some more speakers. So yeah. Just. So please, if you come tomorrow, 9:30 till about five ish, uh, it's a be back. And we have we'll have food and and coffee and water there. So. All right. So thank you. Enjoy. Woo! And if you have and